Luke was the only Gentile, that means non-Jewish writer, in what we call the New Testament. He wrote two letters or books, a gospel account of Jesus' life, we call the Gospel of Luke, and the first history of the early church we know as the Acts of the Apostles, or simply Acts. Now when it comes to Luke's gospel, he records Mary's experience of the conception and birth of Jesus. Most believe that he had spent much time with Mary interviewing her about those early days and events surrounding Jesus' birth and his childhood. In fact, Luke is the only one who records anything about Jesus' childhood. And what he recorded was a, a particular time when Jesus was teaching in the temple at the age of 12. Luke does something else unique. He spends time recording the story surrounding John the Baptist's conception and birth as well. In fact, he spends nearly as much time on Zechariah and Elizabeth's experience, that's John's parents, as he does with the narrative about Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Now, what caused me to look into this event? Timing. I've been thinking about timing a lot, and maybe you have too. I've been concerned about the timing issues over this virus and the reopening of the country for business. Each day that passes under this shutdown, the more people lose their jobs. The longer we wait to reopen our places of business, the greater the number of businesses which will never reopen. We fear the virus, and fear can be healthy, but it can also be paralyzing. Few in our nation remember what a Great Depression looks like, and those that do fear that as well. Already, food banks in parts of the country are being overwhelmed. With last week's unemployment claims, we now have wiped out all the job gains since 2008, 12 years. Add to that fact that many are projecting that the unemployment numbers will reach the levels of the Great Depression. We are at levels which followed the Great, Great Recession in 2008, and as I just said, possibly the Great Depression of the 1930s. All this in just six weeks time as our economy was shut down due to the virus. People forget that poverty is still the number one killer of people and people of all ages. So how long do you roll the dice? It's a timing question. On the other hand, the virus is a threat. There will be a spike when things reopen, but how big? Open too soon, and we might be right back where we were. Wow, this timing thing is really important. Then there's my concern about reopening our church. What will that look like? We as leadership are looking at that now, but how much will we reopen? Will we reopen in stages? What strategy for health reasons will we employ and for how long? Timing. Maybe I'm the only one thinking about timing, but I really don't think so. After all, thousands in Michigan protested the governor's shutdown last week. The Ohio State House has had protesters, as has North Carolina. Timing seems to be on everyone's mind, and I'll admit I'm thinking about it a lot. And there is often a marriage between timing and faith. We often tie the two together. In other words, when things don't take place, which we've prayed for, within an estimated time frame that we think they should, we can have faith issues. We might conclude it must not be God's will, so I'll stop asking. Or, I don't understand why God wouldn't agree to this. What's wrong with my plea? Or, there must be something wrong with me that God won't respond to me when I ask. And even, maybe God isn't really there after all. Timing, at least how we see timing issues, can affect our faith response and our faith view. So, back to the story that caused me to ponder timing. God's timing. Zechariah and Elizabeth. The backstory to all that happened isn't that easy to understand today because we aren't waiting on the Messiah. For us, he's already come. We're on this side of the history. But the prophets for years had foretold his coming. Then the heavens fell silent for 400 years. In the church world, in the theological world, we call this the intertestamental time. Um, it's just that time between the last of the prophets and Jesus coming. But 
it had been a trying time because nothing seemed to be happening. No communication from God to his people. And during that time, do you think the faithful Jews quit praying for Messiah to come? No. Do you think they quit looking for him to come? No. Do you think they kept hoping for his coming? Yeah. All those years of praying and hoping and looking and waiting, it was all about faith and timing. Well, suddenly a Jewish priest named Zechariah was called to duty and by the drawing of lots was chosen to enter the sanctuary to burn incense. When he entered, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and told him that he and Elizabeth would have a child, even in their old age. The child was to be a prophet in the line of Elijah. He was to call the people back to God in preparation for the Messiah's coming. Messiah was coming. Messiah was coming soon, real soon. I have to admit, I find humor in some of the events in the Bible, and this is one of those events. So an angel appears before Zechariah and tells him he is going to be a dad and instructs him on how his son is to be raised. And Zechariah's response is, how do I know this is true? So here's what I'm thinking. How often does an angel appear before you, dude? Like, never. Somehow I think having an angel appear in front of you is proof enough. In fact, I love Gabriel's response. I'm Gabriel. Enough said. Well, Elizabeth does become pregnant with John, and while Elizabeth is still carrying John in pregnancy, Mary receives word she too will have a child, and that child is Jesus the Messiah. So what's the point? How many years had people prayed for the Messiah? And how many years had Elizabeth prayed for a child? How many years had Zechariah prayed for a child? All were people of faith, all believed in God, and I dare say, all had expected some answer to their prayers within an expected time frame. So how many of those who had prayed for Messiah to come died before he came? And for Elizabeth and Zechariah, they knew that biologically speaking, a child had become impossible. So I wonder when they had quit praying, assuming the answer from God was no. In Hebrews 11, the writer gives one example after another from Israel's history concerning faith and timing. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab. I could go on and on and he did as well. And then he ends with these words. All of these people we have mentioned received God's approval because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. You see, they still believed that what God had promised he would do. Sure, they may have thought they would see it in their day, at least in a bigger way than happened in some cases, but they didn't stop believing. Maybe they had a better understanding of God than we do. They weren't driven so much by time, more by faith. Their culture, unlike ours, wasn't so instant. Nevertheless, I'm certain they longed to see the promises. When I look at this birth of John and birth of Jesus event, I'm taken by the fact that it was God's time. And when it was his time, he didn't mess around. He was moving in so many directions at once that it just kind of makes your head spin. Zechariah and Elizabeth, and Joseph and Mary, a census that took Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem, an old man named Simeon who was told he would see the child before he died, Magi who traveled from afar, traveling to Egypt for Mary and Joseph and Jesus' safety. It was as if God became the world's greatest travel agent, setting the whole thing up. Every detail covered, every strategic moment planned. As Paul wrote, For God says, At just the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. I have my opinions about timing, about reopening things, but I also don't have all the information that those making the decisions do have. In a sense, timing and faith are still married. I have to have faith in those who are making decisions about timing. So as we pray, as we hope, as we wait on whatever it is that we have talked to God about, the same holds true. We have to have faith in God and trust in his timing.